Spinal cord injury detailed. Here is a patient who is involved in a car accident. He is unable to move all four extremities. So we're going to examine the patient. You need to apply the ATLS protocol and you need to evaluate the patient according to the ABCs. You got to secure the airway. You got to control breathing and ventilation. You got to control the circulation and you got to control the hemorrhage. Spinal cord injury above C5 most likely will require intubation, especially if the patient has complete quadriplegia. The spinal cord injury patients are at risk for hemodynamic and neurogenic shock. So you're going to finish the initial survey and you're going to resuscitate the patient. Then the patient is examined and a thorough neurological exam should be done. So you're going to ask yourself a question, is the patient in a spinal shock? How do you know that? You check the bulbocavernosus reflex. It is S3. If you have no bulbocavernosus, that means the patient is in a spinal shock. So in a spinal shock, the peripheral neurons are temporarily unresponsive to the brain stimuli. The injury is like a hurricane, wiped out everything and shocked everything. There is no motor, there is no sensory below the level of the lesion. There is flaccid paralysis and no bulbocavernosus reflex. This is temporary and you're gonna go tell the family, I can't tell the prognosis until that bulbocavernosus reflex comes back. When it will come back, it comes back in about 48 hours. Sometimes it takes three days. So this is the first one that comes back. It's like the local activity comes back after the hurricane. It's like the local village, the farmers, this activity comes back. That is the bulbocavernosus reflex. So when it comes back, that means it is the end of the spinal shock. Now we assess how much damage to the roots how much damage to the structures. It's like we assess the damage to the highway. So we're gonna try to establish the connection. Is there an internet that is functional? We'll try to establish all that. So the brain control everything. The brain send it a signal, and then we're gonna see if that signal is there in this destroyed village. How do you do that bulbocavernosus reflex? The bulbocavernosus reflex indicates the absence or the presence of the spinal shock. You squeeze the gland's penis or you tug on the Foley catheter. So if you get an anal sphincter contraction, this is the bulbocavernosus reflex. So, we're going to try to determine if the injury is complete or incomplete. Complete means no motor or sensory below the level of the lesion. We need to determine the Asia impairment scale. It goes from complete to normal, A, B, C, D, E. The A is complete, no motor, no sensory, and no sacral sparing. The Asia impairment scale is dealing with a spinal cord injury, is not dealing with a college degree. So if you are in college, you get A, you're great. But in a spinal cord injury, if you get A, it is not great, it is bad. The spine is injured bad. A is bad. 
complete. So the B and C and D are incomplete. Incomplete means spinal cord injury with some neurological function distal to the injury. It can be motor or sensory or sacral sparing, which can be voluntary rectal tone or anal contraction or perianal sensation. If there is sacral sparing, that means the injury is incomplete. If there is no sacral sparing, then the injury is complete. The B incomplete, so there is no motor, but some sensory preservation. It may be the sensory sparing. C is incomplete. There is a motor function, but more than 50% of the muscle group has 1 over 5 or 2 over 5 of the muscle function, means less than grade 3. Patient cannot raise the arms or legs, like negative straight leg raising means less than grade 3. D is incomplete motor, and more than 50% of the muscle group has 3 over 5 or more. E is normal, normal motor and sensory function. Grading of muscle power. 1 is flicker of contraction. Grade 2, they have some movement if gravity is eliminated. 3 over 5 means muscle contraction against gravity. 4 over 5 is muscle contraction against gravity and some resistance. Grade 5 is normal. So are we in a spinal shock or not? You do the bulbocavernosus reflex. Return of the bulbocavernosus reflex means end of a spinal shock. The next step is a complete or incomplete. Focus on the sacral sparing. You want to find sacral sparing because that means the patient's injury is incomplete and you will have better prognosis. When we talk about the incomplete, there are four types. The brown C card, the central cord, the anterior cord, and the posterior cord. We have the central cord, the most common one. It happens usually in elderly with hyperextension injury. It involves the motor of the upper extremity, which will be weaker than the lower extremity. And 50% of the patient will walk. The anterior cord got a very poor prognosis. Usually it is vascular. The brown C cord, hemisection of the spinal cord, usually by a knife. You will have ipsilateral loss of motor and contralateral loss of pain and sensation. And the prognosis for recovery of the spinal cord is usually good. The posterior cord, loss of the deep sensation. After that, we're going to decide the neurologic level of injury. What is the lowest segment with bilaterally intact sensation to pin, prick, light touch, and grade 3 or more anti-gravity muscle function and strength? The sensory level is used when there is no motor level to test, as in the thoracic spine. When we talk about the sensory levels, what do we have here? The nipple is at T4, the umbilicus at T10, and the symphysis pubis is at T12. So let's take some functional levels. C5, deltoid and biceps. C6, wrist extension. C7, triceps. Wrist flexion and finger extension. C8, 
C8 is finger flexion. There is another area we need to talk about, which is neurogenic shock. What is neurogenic shock? Neurogenic shock is hypotension and bradycardia following acute spinal cord injury due to disruption of the autonomic pathway and loss of the sympathetic tone to the heart. There will be widespread vasodilatation with decrease in the systemic vascular resistance due to injury to the descending sympathetic system. Monitoring with the swaying gains may be helpful for careful fluid management. Swaying gains will really guide the appropriate fluid management and resuscitation. You may give vasopressors to the patient to treat the hypotension. Hypotension and tachycardia is hypovolemic shock. Hypotension and bradycardia is neurogenic shock. So what is the autonomic dysreflexia? It occurs in complete spinal cord injury due to sympathetic overcharge, means increased activity. It's uncontrollable sympathetic output associated with certain triggers. Usually unchecked visceral stimulation like fecal impaction or obstruction or kinking of the Foley catheter. It occurs in patients with the spinal cord injury above T6 and it can be fatal. The patient will get headache, agitation, almost malignant hypertension, sudden very high blood pressure, profuse sweating, Check the patient for fecal impaction or unkink the Foley catheter. You may want to give the patient antihypertensive medications. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.